Lillard, he got the shot off. Lillard, go! Welcome to the Clip Boy, your brand new podcast, basketball podcast, NBA, NCAA, high school. I'm your host, Coach Chuck. I got my co-host with me. Yeah, my name's T Rob, also known as Coach Rao. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Ball with Heart. You can follow me on Instagram at c.alex85. Uh, tell me a little about a little bit about yourself. How'd you get into this coaching thing? Well, it all started with me actually playing basketball. I played as a young kid up until the college ranks. Uh, I played AAU basketball with the North Rams, high school basketball, St. Benedict's Prep, a nationally ranked team, and then eventually in college for Caldwell University, and I finished my collegiate career with uh, Rutgers University. I started coaching immediately after. I had a one year left before I got my degree, so I started coaching in college at Rutgers University. Then I transitioned that into coaching uh, prep school basketball, uh, where I was extremely successful. I coached there for about five years, and the five years I did prep school, I got over 75 kids into college on athletic scholarships. Uh, now I'm back into the AAU ranks, where I'm helping kids develop their skill set. Okay, okay, okay. Me more so. Then play college ball. I got kicked off. You know, I got a little bit of attitude. Whatever. <laughs> I started coaching at eighteen though. But I'm more of a basketball whore. You know, I did I did AAU prep school, high school, coaching men's leagues, playing men's leagues. Give a couple people the business. You know what I mean? I like to think so. <laughs> but no, of course you would. <laughs> speaking of men's league, let's talk about something that happened this summer oh. that we were part of. That uh, we just going straight into that, huh? Yeah, it gained a little bit of controversy. So uh, we came out. Me, you, and uh, Yvonne, Yvonne Raymond. Shout out to Yvonne. Came out with a top ten list of basketball players in Essex County. Okay, we put the list out, and immediately. Immediately, we got the backlash. <laughs> got the backlash. You know, a bunch of people who play college ball, pro-am ball, whatever the case may be. Everybody feels as though they should be justified to be in that top ten. So what do you think about the backlash, and do you think that our top ten list was correct? I do believe our top ten list was correct. I think a lot of the backlash we got wasn't for the ten people, but it was more so where those people rank. So in that sense, I feel like it's unwarranted. I feel like... We gave people respect by putting them in the top ten. Everybody's going to have a difference of opinion on where each person should fall. Some people said the people that we had lower should be higher. Some people that we had higher, people said should be lower, and vice versa. Some people said they love where these people was at. Mm -hmm. So it's a difference of opinion. I mean, for me, I just wanted to put it out there because behind the scenes, everybody's chit-chatting, saying this, saying that, but nobody wanted to come to the forefront with their list. So I said, why not? Let's put something out there. Let's start the controversy. And once we did that, the summer leagues was lit on fire. People was coming out playing much harder. Like, people that wanted to get on the list, they was going at people that was on the list. You know, so I think it was a good thing for the city. Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, me more so. A lot of people know me. I ain't played, like I said, I ain't <laughs> played college ball. So when I was playing men's leagues, I only wanted to go at the motherfuckers who was playing college ball. Facts. Because I wanted to give them 30 and let them know, like, yeah, I don't care who you play for. You feel me? So now when we put the list out, we wanted, we just wanted a tougher league. I didn't want to see just to name names, you know, not saying that they play with each other, but I'm just naming people. I didn't want to see Jesse, Corey, and Keon play on the same team. Like, I want to see them go at each other. I want to see them mm -hmm. kill each other. You know what I'm saying? Well, not kill each other, but you know what I mean? I want to nah, see the go dog. Go as they should. I think more so with, like, this NBA thing where you see a lot of people teaming up is, like, trickling down to college because now you see all the top, out of the top ten, three of them going to the same school. That never was happening before, and mm -hmm. now it's, it's even trickling down to the pro am league. So, uh, was the top ten list correct? I mean, shit. Josh Treadwell came had thirty five. I think the first game and was yeah, like, was and talking. said, "Where the fuck I'm at on that list?" <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? He so was talking Mackey after every point. Was it was it correct? I, I don't know. Boop, me and Booby had like an hour conversation. He felt he should have been higher. You feel me? I mean, like I told, like you said, I think it was respect to put people on that list. And I mean, you don't got to prove nothing to me. Uh, like, you know what I mean? But that's just my opinion. And like you said, a lot of people be in the group chats texting their opinion. Yep. Yo, I, I'm going to kick Josie ass so or I'm going to kick Corey yep. ass but won't say it to their face. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So now it just made everybody want to go at each other. Facts. Yeah. So what did you think of the uh, the championship pro game, though? It was interesting. It was interesting to me because 
um, Sandy's team, like they was kind of going into the league. Every no one really like, ah, right, they gonna win this. They went undefeated, but they did it by playing kind of like a Golden State style of basketball where everyone's playing together, everyone's sacrificing for the betterment of the team. And the same thing for the Patterson team, uh, MC Elite. So it was Rack Attack, MC Elite. MC Elite, they had a bunch of cats that just knew how to play basketball, you know. Some of them played Division One, Division Two, overseas, and they just played real basketball. It wasn't too much one-on-one, -on -one, clear out for this person, that person. They moved the ball, whoever's open made the shots. If somebody was hot, they gave them the ball. You know, they just happened to run into a game where they just couldn't hit shots towards the end. Can I be honest? Yes. I think MC Elite tricked it off. They tricked it off. They had the game. <laughs> they was winning damn near the whole game. Yeah. To the fourth quarter. And then now um, this, this is my clap back. Everybody said, wow, who was we to have an opinion? Da, 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 da. I put Corey on the list. We put yeah. Corey on the list. Yep. Yo, Corey ain't did this in two years. Now, you know, Facts. people would be in his face. Yo, you a legend. But then when we Facts. put him on the list, you know, Corey ain't did this. Corey ain't did oh that. Oh, my God. And, and and Corey is probably the reason that Rack Attack won the championship. He is the reason. He had that run. With, what was it? 10, 12 straight points? Yeah. And can't nobody say nothing because everybody was running on the court. The game was yep. still going on. A bunch of groupies. Right? But but come to that list and everybody like, why is Corey there? That's why Corey's there. Yep. That's why Corey's there. So Moments I think, like that. I think that justified him being on that list. You know what I mean? Can we get more of him doing that more often? Yeah. But he's one of those people who don't work out. He's not uh, training 24-7. He's just going to come out when he playing. He's going dog. He's straight off the couch. He ain't training at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, I think this is the best time of year. Summer league's over. No no more pro-ams. It, it, it's right to the business. NBA started off about maybe two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. NCAA start tonight. Oh, yeah. High school tryout starting about two weeks. It's the best time of the year, man. This is my favorite time of the year. So, in the summer, what was the most – let me start NBA. Let's start NBA because NBA started already, right? Yep. What was the most surprising move for you of the offseason? For me, the most surprising move, I think when Kawhi and uh, Paul George ended up at the Clippers. Okay. You know, everybody was saying they were going to end up at the Lakers. No one really gave uh, the Clippers a shot at getting them. But somehow, some way, the Clippers pulled it off. Me? The most surprising, it, it, kind of, it includes Paul George, but not Kawhi. Okay. It was more so the disbanding of OKC. Mm. Uh, I don't think they've missed the playoffs in the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, Russ, right off an of MVP uh, year, maybe two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Paul George was an MVP candidate this past year. They just ran into a tr they ran into the Blazers, and, and Lillard was on some shit. It wasn't like they, they played... Hillside Comets and lost. They wasn't like they got upset. They played somebody that went to the Western Conference Finals, and they wound up losing. And next thing we know, we wake up, you know, Paul George to the Clippers. Whoa, what the hell going on, right? Yeah. Two weeks later, and nobody – you see Russell Westbrook, you see OKC. Yeah. And you know, That's one of the people you think get drafted by a team, retire with that team. Fact. Now he got braids. He don't even look like Russell Wilson. You know what? <laughs> he got braids. He in a Houston Rockets jersey. So that was more surprising for me. But I think OKC might have did good for themselves with that trade. That kid, Shea, Shea Gildred Alexander, oh, yeah. he's, a, he's a dog. But it was, it was time, though. It was definitely time. Like, they were kind of stuck for these past few years. First round, second round, max. It was time for something new. I mean, but think it about it. How long was Paul George there? Two years. I mean, how many people really win championships within the first two years? How long was he realistically going to stay there? He just read up. Mm -hmm. He just had read up. Remember, he was a free agent. He got traded there. Mm -hmm. He had one year left. He re up. Him and Russ was, Russell Westbrook was at the party saying, hey, we back. He I think he signed for maybe three, four years. So, yeah, about two, three, three years left. I think he did a three-year deal. But I, don't, I didn't see him staying there long term. I didn't see him staying there long term, especially mm – -hmm. Before he even read up, the talks was always with him going to L.A. Yeah, but, you know, how many people, how many times before LeBron went there, yo, this person going to L.A., this person going to the Knicks, this person going to the Lakers. It never happens. Like When uh, it comes to the Lakers? Yeah. The Lakers always get their guy. They except for Chris Paul. They, they've been shitty since Kobe. They haven't got nobody since Kobe. Who was supposed to go there? Paul George was supposed to go there. Kawhi Leonard was supposed to go there. Mm -hmm. Uh Anthony Davis wound up going there. I'm just saying, if LeBron didn't go there, I think. And, and, and I think he changed the landscape yeah, of it. If LeBron didn't go there, I think Kawhi 
and or Paul George ends up there with the Lakers. Maybe of, I mean, opposed to the Clippers. Kawhi had a chance to go there the season before and didn't go there. They wanted him the year. They wanted they they tried to trade for him. Remember Magic Johnson got a uh, fine for tampering. Yeah, that was free a, free agent come. He yeah, re-upped that was the, in, OKC. That wasn't a trade. No, but he re-upped with him. So he was a free agent last year. Paul Who, George. Kawhi? No, Paul George. Oh, you talking about Paul? Okay. He, he was yeah. A, so whatever. But uh, okay. So we talked about surprise move. Who do you think did good in the offseason? Made good moves. Uh, made the best moves for the team moving forward, not just in the in, the, in right now in the long run. Dallas, and you like Dallas? It? I like Dallas. I like what they're doing over there, man. They always find a way to find those players to come there. You know, I know they got the the situation with the taxes, so you get extra money and all that other stuff. But uh, Mark Cuban, he does a great job of getting those players in, and then he got the Luca and uh, KP. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, and they got history too. From overseas internationally, I think Mark Cuban is really good. Well, not Mark Cuban, but his uh, staff, whoever he has, mm-hmm. uh, scouting overseas players, scouting talent. Yeah, yeah, because you know they got Dirk, who winds up being Hall of Famer. Yep, probably definitely top ten power forward of all time. Guaranteed uh, NBA champion, uh, MVP. Yeah, you know, and now he come back with Luca. Uh, everybody said it was going to be good, but it was how good can he be? Mm-hmm. And he's a fucking beast. <laughs> he's a beast. That's my guy. I like Luca, man. He and do it all. Then he get KP, yep. but nobody talks about Rick Carlisle. He's been there forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter how bad they do, they're never going to fire him. Yeah. They had a couple bad losing seasons, but when the before Luca got there, when Dirk was injured, well, they, when the last time the Dallas Mavericks made the playoffs. I mean, yeah, think about but it. But they when the last time they've been out of the top ten? Top ten don't matter. I understand <laughs> that, but I'm saying you saying they had a horrible season. Top no, I ain't saying horrible. I said they had losing seasons, bad losing would, seasons. When did they have a losing season? They didn't have a losing season. They just didn't they had a losing season last year. What was their record last year? We can Google. Yeah, it. Google that. They didn't have a losing record Hold last on. year. Let me see something. Here. Dallas yeah. Mavericks record. You have to. You just got to remember they're in, they're in the West. If they was in the East, they'd probably be fourth or fifth seed. Oh yeah, bro. You 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 know you know who you are uh, talking to, right? I, I know exactly who I'm talking to. 2018, 19, 33 and 49. Mm. 2017, 18, 24 and 58. You got that. <laughs> but, yeah, no. But in in the West, it is a little hard. But I think the dynamics of that is changing. The East is trying to come up a little bit. But yeah, the West is definitely where it's at as far as the most competition. For me, as far as doing good, I think the Pelicans did real good. I think mm. the Pelicans did really good. Uh, AD wanted to leave. They could have traded him in the season. They waited. And I think they got a ton. I think Lonzo Ball, Facts. I think Lonzo Ball never really got a fair shot. Mm-hmm. And LA kind of uh, LA kind of did him like they did D'Angelo Russell. Yep. You know, I agree with that 100%. You know, D'Angelo Russell had two years in LA. Didn't have bad years. You know, mm-hmm. he his rookie year was Kobe Bryant's uh, farewell, farewell tour. tour yeah. So you really that screwed him. Yeah, you know, you can't go out and just be wilding because Kobe wilding. Yeah. Then the next year they fired. I think Byron Scott was the coach. They yeah. bring in Luke Walton. So you're two years. You got two new coaches, two mm-hmm. new systems. Then they trade them. They bring in Alonzo Ball. Alonzo Ball there. Mm, does decent as a rookie. He averaged like Injury 12, 7, too. and 7, but he was hurt. Yeah. But then the next year, you bring in Rajon Rondo. Screwed him. So you kind of take him off the ball, yeah. and he doesn't really get the opportunities. So now I think he goes to the Pelicans. He'll play, he'll play the point. Drew Holiday will play the two. He's doing well so far this year, too. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Ingram's a dog. He just gave my Nets forty, but they took an L. But <laughs> yeah. he, he, he uh, I think he Ingram, coming to his yeah. own. This is Ingram's year. Think about it. He this came into the league at eighteen. Yeah. People think, oh, he's a bum. He's a bum. Oh, yeah, he was a he, he's, one a, and done. he's a baby. One and done. Yeah, you know, and and he he's so slim. He got the KD built. He had to get and grow into his frame. Facts. So you know he averaging about twenty four right now. Josh Hart is very good. Mm-hmm. Very good role player. Oh, he was a key piece. I like I like the vets. They got Derek Favors. They also got J.J. Redick, probably yes. one of the top five shooters in the league. Facts. And, and then pretty much with them, I think they can compete as as long as Zion stay healthy. That That's mm. the uh, X factor. That's the big X factor right there. Yeah. If he's healthy, it, it's a totally different team because we – I mean, preseason isn't everything, but we saw in the preseason he was like – yeah. he was shooting about 60 70%, getting to the rim whenever he wanted to. So people who got still these – still looking easy. Yeah, like he, he so, he's fast. He's probably the strongest player in the league right now. My thing is this. I'm curious to see 
if he's how hurt he is he is he really hurt or they being cautious like I want to know what's really going on I think it's a mixture I think that he I don't want to say he rushed back but I think he was still a little bit hurt from the Duke incident mm-hmm. when he uh when he played North Carolina okay. bust out his shoe his knee was messed up I think he might have sprained a ligament or something and came back for the team uh because Dang it, they say he's too heavy to jump like that. He's been that size forever, and yeah. you never heard of him getting hurt. Exactly. Now, maybe he's playing more games, but not, not even really. AAU, no, we've been playing, yeah, <laughs> playing every day. So Twice a day some days. So, like with him, I just think it's a matter of him getting his knee to full strength. And Pelican, it's a mixture. So, if he's really hurt, sit there and rest. And the Pelican, that's their future. You know, they look at him as their LeBron. So, they're not going to put him out there. If they don't need to, are they realistically going to win a championship this year? No, no, not. No, but so. they got to keep this group together if they want a real chance. Yeah, they, but they're young. All of them is on That's, rookie contracts. Exactly. So you know, I think Brandon Ingram got one more year on his rookie contract. Lonzo might have two. Uh, Josh Hart might have two. Lonzo, I mean, but Zion got four. So you know, let Brandon Ingram. Cool. The only thing is now Brandon Ingram showing off now. So mm-hmm. now he might have. He might be saying, Yo, yeah. "Y'all was looking for ninety million. I might want that one twenty now." You feel me? Yeah, so yeah. that might be the only thing. But I think they did really good. I mean, besides uh, Brandon Ingram, who do you see emerging as a star coming up? A emerging star in yeah. the league. Yeah. Yes. Do I want to? I don't want to just say somebody obvious. I'm gonna just go say Gildress Alexander. Mm. I think uh, I think I told you when they made that trade. I don't think OKC was gonna be as bad as everybody thinks. Okay. Uh, Chris Paul is a good vet, and I don't really think people see how good that kid is. You know, he was on a playoff team last year before he got traded. Uh, he was with Drew. I'm not Drew Holiday. Uh, Lou Will. Mm-hmm. They had Pat Beverly, so mm-hmm. they had a lot of guards. They traded for Lou Shamit last year, so the Clippers had a lot of guards, and he did his job. Yeah. Know? But now he's the focal point. Okay. And OKC. So I think once you – he'll be a household name when it, within the next year or two. A lot of people don't know – like basketball junkies know who he is, but like yeah. the common people don't know who Shea Gildress is. And I think in the next year people say, okay, done, done, this kid's really good. Yeah, I get that. I what about go you? I got, a couple, I got a couple people that I, that I like right now. Um, obviously being a Bulls fan, I like Lori, Lori Mocketing. Mm-hmm. He's doing he does wonderful things. The only thing with me and him is that he has to become more consistent. Like he started the season out on fire, dropped thirty five. Then the next couple games, it's a big drop off, about a twenty point drop off. So I like him, but I want to see more consistency from him. Mm-hmm. Um, obvious people like um, Luca, Trey Young, I think they're they're going to be the future of the NBA. Without like, a doubt. Um, it was just a couple people that. That I really, really like right now that I got my eyes on. Um, Zach Levine, he's not really young anymore, but um, if him and Laurie can get it together, the Bulls won't be an issue in the future. I think they'll be a consistent six feet. I think Laurie's good and Zach Levine is good, and I'm, you know, I ain't talking trash just because that's your team. Mm-hmm. I just don't think they're superstar level to, to carry that team to a four or five seat because mm-hmm. the, the East is not the West, it's not deep one through nine. Yeah. But that one through five, one through six, uh, I think those four or five teams are usually consistent, consistent enough to stay in there. So I, I, I think they'll be around the six, maybe seven C. And to be honest, they mess around and give somebody in that 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 first round playoff matchup a little bit of a hard time, right? Definitely. But we ask who did good, who you think did bad in the offseason? Mm, Golden State. I think Golden State did bad, mm. and not for the obvious reasons. Most people are gonna look at it. Oh, they lost KD. Oh, Clay is hurt. No, they did bad because they lost some of their key role players. Mm. And now people are starting to understand the value of those players. Damn. People didn't understand how valuable a Sean Livingston is, an Andre Iguodala. You know? They don't understand like all the intricate details that go into the game. They just look at the stats. They say, Oh, this person has thirty, he has twenty, he has fifteen, he gets this many rebounds. So they underestimate the stuff that don't get locked into the box scores. See, with them, I thought they would still make the playoffs. But, one, all these injuries came. Like, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, they might be the Illuminati. They got the, the three rings and <laughs> they they <laughs> they put Kevin Durant, Achilles up and Steph Durant, I mean, Steph Curry hand, whatever. But 
I knew it was going to take them a while to gel because one, they have a motion offense. Uh, all of them are, are usually moving, pass and cut, pass and move, a lot of screens. Yeah. Uh, D'Angelo Russell is more so a, a ISO so, pick and roll yeah. ball player, so it's going to take time to gel. And they got they're young. They're very very young. I don't think people really realize. Like you said, they lost a uh, Livingston retired. Iguodala got traded to the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quinn Cook went to the Lakers. So mm-hmm. a lot of people left. Uh, they got the rookie from Michigan, Jordan Poole. Yeah. They got the rookie from uh, Villanova, Villanova, Eric Paschal. He just had a great game, too. Uh, Damian Lee might be in his second or third year. Like, mm-hmm. they got nine players, 23 or younger. I mean, crazy. so they're, they're very, very young. So I thought they would make the playoffs, but now with these injuries, it's, it looks like it's over for them. Yeah. Uh, Do you, you think the injuries are real? Uh, I mean, why wouldn't mm-hmm. they be real? Steph Curry just had surgery on his hand. I don't think nobody's just going to go have surgery on their hand just for the, the sake of saying, oh, let's, let's fake them out. We're losing, so I'm going to have surgery on my hand. Uh, no, I mean, now is Draymond as hurt as he may be? He hurt his finger. He, he usually played through things, but he might be like, you know what? Th- this is just not our year. You got to think. They've been on a consistent run for five years straight. Yeah. Five years straight, three rings, two losses in the finals. They've been playing from October to the end of June. Jeez. Everybody else get, usually gets some type of break. That's the yeah. you know that was everybody was there. Yo, LeBron, he was playing all these years. All these years. so now it's their turn. They've never really got those breaks, and none of them are built like LeBron. LeBron's built yeah. like a truck. Steph Curry is very small. He already used to have ankle injuries, so he was already looked at as a uh, injury prone before that. Uh, Draymond Green is always hustling, throwing his body all over the place. Klay Thompson injury is unfortunate because uh, he was cooking that game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you got to look at D'Angelo Russell got hurt, but, you know, he was hurt his first two years, got hurt with the Nets third year. Mm. I mean, injury prone, so I don't think they're faking it. And I hate – I saw my man on Facebook was putting that up there <laughs> uh, saying it was a conspiracy theory, I but I think he was tripping. No. I don't know. To me, who did bad, I looked at the Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't like their direction at all. They got a lot of players that are similar. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton, they drafted Darius Garland and Kevin Porter Jr. Mm-hmm. They still got Brevin Knight. That's six guards who all really kind of play very similar. So what's the direction there? Then you got the aging vets. What are you doing with Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson? Mm-hmm. You're not competing. You know you're not competing. Why not trade them, get assets, get some cap space? There's people that want them. But, you know, sometimes you want to trade somebody and get a, a boatload. Nah, just get the right amount you yeah. know, for your team and, and do what's good for them young kids. I don't I don't see what they're doing. Like, compare them to Atlanta. When LeBron left, Atlanta and, and, and Cleveland were in similar situations. I, I look at Atlanta, the young up-and-coming team. They got John Collins. Mm-hmm. They got Trey Young. Mm-hmm. Uh, they went and got uh, – Oh my God! Oh boy, from Duke, Cam Reddish this year. Okay. They got yeah. who, they got Herda. They got DeAndre Hunter. Uh-huh. So you know they got a night. Think, look at that. Oh, Trey yeah, Young, yeah. the point guard. Herda completed two. Forgot they had Hunter. Yeah, Hunter yeah. completed three, four. Cam Reddish completed two, three, four. John Collins completed four, five. It's a mixture of nice young, yeah, different uh, positions. Yeah, D. Clarkson, Sexton, Garland, Brandon Knight. Kevin Porter Jr., they're all ones and twos. Yeah. Maybe Kevin Porter and Clarkson, uh, Clarkson completed two or three. Mm-hmm. But they're all combo guards. So how does – you just drafted Sexton two years ago. How does he develop when you draft another point guard in Garland, but you got Brevin Knight back there taking up cap space? Where is Kevin Porter Jr. going to play? Mm-hmm. Jordan Clarkson is going to want to touch the ball. So I don't, I don't see what they're doing. I don't know what the direction is there. Let's go this, though. Prediction, playoff teams. Playoff teams. Ooh. You go Eastern Conference. Okay. We can do that. We can do that. In the East, let's see. Obviously, you know, kind of the top top four or five is pretty easy. I like what Miami's doing. I see them in that playoff. Do you want, we going order or? Whatever you want. I mean, I, you know, you know how I, did. I, I got mine in order. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's up to you. Like, I don't know the order yet. I okay. don't know the order yet. I really don't. But I know I got eight teams for you. Okay. So I like Miami. But 76ers, of course. Mm-hmm. I think the Celtics are going to be in there. Mm-hmm. The Bucks. Surprisingly, I like the Raptors. I didn't mm-hmm. think they were going to be doing as well as they're doing. Yeah, what's the name? Uh, shut me up, uh, Pascal Siakam. Yeah, he shut me up too. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was talking trash. I mean, I know he had a great season last year, but yeah. I wanted to see what he do without uh, Kawhi. He, he, he like shut up, Chuck. Yep. 
<laughs> he, he got me to. Uh, I like the Pacers. Mm-hmm. The Nets are making me nervous. Mm-hmm. I had them as a definite. Now I'm like, I don't know. Um, who am I missing two? Oh, like one. a one. My last one. I think I'm gonna go with the Hawks. Okay. Okay. Two. I'm gonna go two things with you, right? Okay. Why are the Nets making you nervous? The Nets make me nervous because of Kyrie. And this is why, not because the off the court, whatever they're trying to say about him, but his style of play is what makes me nervous. Um, you guys have a coach that coaches a certain type of way. Mm-hmm. All right? So he kinda, he's kind of structured in the way he coach. Kyrie doesn't really, when it comes to a team, he doesn't really do well team-wise in a structured environment. Same thing in Boston, I think, like the team did as well because it's, he has an actual coach coach as opposed to someone that's just going to say, hey, go out here, roll the ball out, do what you do. I'll make sure everyone's in the right positions mm-hmm. for you. Now, what I will say is Kyrie is going to have the ball in his hand way more than he had in Boston. But the thing with Atkinson is he runs the offense, but he doesn't. Mm-hmm. They really run one play with maybe three to four options out of it. Mm-hmm. And then once that play doesn't work, last year it was all pick and roll, either D'Angelo Russell, then Witty or Levert. Mm. So now it's the same thing. ISO with Kyrie when those plays don't work. And for for Atkinson, it actually works out better. And you know I'm a big D'Lo fan. I was kind of mad yeah. uh, when we first signed Kyrie. Not that Kyrie wasn't good, but I just like, you know, you, they grew on me. You know, D'Lo grew on me. We made the playoffs. We didn't make the playoffs since 2014 or something like that. <laughs> but with Kyrie, it's better because D'Lo couldn't get to the rim. He wasn't athletic enough to get to the rim often. He had a, sh- shot the mid-range very, very well. Floater. And he said, yeah, the floater was good, and he settled for threes. Kyrie's getting to the rim. He's climbing up people's chest. Now they had the double team, and now Joe Harris is wide open. Uh, Torian Prince is wide open. He can shoot. I just think it's going to take them a little while to gel. Okay. Because we just like the uh, Golden State, we lost a lot last year for a playoff team. We lose D'Lo. We lose Jared Dudley, who people might say he sucked, but he, he nah, played. he was a key piece for y'all. Yeah, for us, Trevion Graham, Shabazz Napier, Rondé mm-hmm. Holler Jefferson, uh, Damari Carroll. I don't think people really realize how much we lost. I was trying to think lost. of his name yesterday. I was talking to somebody, Damari Carroll. That's what I was trying to think yeah, of. Yeah, he went to the Spurs. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we that's six rotation players that we lost right there, and we only played ten. So I think that was a big loss of – but I think they'll make it. My top eight, the minds are in order. I got Philly with the first seed. I just think mm-hmm. uh, they're very long on defense with uh, Horford and B. Josh Richardson plays great defense. Ben Simmons plays great defense. They kind of can switch all around because, you know, Horford can play the one. He was guarding Giannis in the playoff. I mean, Giannis was kick, kicking up because he's Giannis. <laughs> but – for you to even put your center on an MVP small forward shows mm-hmm. what you think of him defensively. I think their defense is going to be a little bit much for teams. Uh, I got Milwaukee at the two seed. Uh, I think Giannis' game is just going to keep growing. If he can hit the jump shot consistently, then it's a different type of player. Uh, Toronto at the three seed, they surprised me. I got Boston at the four Toronto seed. Toronto at the three. Ooh. Yeah, I got Boston at the four seed, and I got Brooklyn at the five seed. And I think that, that that's a very, very, very good controversial matchup for the first round. Kyrie goes back to Boston for the playoffs. Mm. They hate, Kyrie and Kemba. Yeah, they hate Kyrie and Boston right now. Oh, they yeah. hate them. So I think that'll be a good first round matchup. I got Miami at the six seed, uh, and I think they'll beat Toronto in a seven game series. Miami? Yeah, uh, um, with Jimmy Butler. Yeah, Jimmy is. Uh, so much for them. I got the Pacers at the 7th seed only because Oladipo's hurt right now. He's yeah. not back. I think once he comes back, they'll make a run. And that's a little dangerous matchup for Milwaukee. Uh, that that lineup with Brogdon, uh, Oladipo, and they got old boy T.J. Warren from Philly. I mean, not Philly, uh, Phoenix. Mm-hmm. They got the big man, uh, Miles Turner. They mm-hmm. got Sabonis, son. I think that's a, a nice little matchup for them. Then I got the Pistons. I got the Pistons. Mm-hmm. Andre Drummond. Uh, Derrick Rose is like turning no, back the hands boy. of Tom. Uh, not even he's not dunking on nobody, but he's playing very, very well. Yeah. Uh, I think they'll make the eight seed again once Blake Griffin comes back. You know that he had the little injury, so they rested him. Yeah. And I think they'll be the eight seed. But I, I was con- I was considering the Hawks, but John Collins just got suspended, so I had to change my <laughs> so He got uh, the twenty five games, and I think they're too young to mm. overcome him his absence. So okay. Uh, move on to the Western Conference. You want me to go first, or you go first? Um, I'll go first. I'll throw mm-hmm. mine's out there. 
So, so we had seven and eight. Let's just seven. We had seven of the same teams out yeah. of eight. Okay, go ahead. The West, I got the Lakers. Okay. The Clippers. Okay. Dallas. Mm -hmm. The Nuggets. Mm -hmm. Jazz. Mm -hmm. Blazers. Mm -hmm. Let's say the Rockets. No, mm. the Rockets. Okay. And Phoenix. Mm. Phoenix starting off really well today. This yes. year. Yes, they are. I think they'll take a. They five and two, but they ain't really played nobody. So I think they they. Uh, I mean, they just beat. I can't say that they beat Philly, but Embiid didn't play. That's a big difference. Uh, but I think, you know, they played Memphis uh once. They played the Knicks. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I ain't. I don't, they ain't getting to that that bag when they got to play the Clippers and the Lakers back to back and then travel. And play but Minnesota or somebody like that. The key thing is they're beating the teams they're supposed to beat. Yeah, that's true. That's the key. That's true. That's the key for them. They got to beat the teams they're supposed to beat and then get a couple wins they're not supposed to get. And I, and my thing, I don't think they're going to get those those wins. So, get um, a couple. so once again, I think we're seven out of eight. All right. My one seed is the Clippers. Okay. I think when Paul George come back, they're defensively they're just the best team in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat Bath, Kawhi, Paul George. You know, you're just switching on everything, making everybody life miserable. You know, LeBron try to switch those matchups and, nah, dog, <laughs> I'm I'm here now. Like, you feel me? You know, Pat Beverly a little, you know, neck. So, you know, I think defensively, I think they'll make it tough on teams. And then offensively with Kawhi, Paul George, you got Lou Will coming off the bench, Shamit can shoot it. Even Montrez Harrell coming off the bench, giving you 15 and 8, 9, something like that. Yeah. I think they're, they're going to be a bit much. I got the Nuggets at the two seed again. I think they're gonna uh, be mm. do very well. And the only reason I had the Lakers at the three seed only because I think you know at this point in LeBron's career he's gonna get a lot of uh, load management games. Okay. So I think the Denver uh, overtake them. I got Portland at the four seed. I like them especially if Nurkic come back. Mm. Get get them a, a nice size with Hassan Whiteside and him. Game yeah. time. Yeah, and you know, you all, you already know about Dame and CJ, so and I like the Kent Bazemore pickup. Yes. Yeah, I like that pickup for him. Houston Rockets at the five C, I think it's gonna take Harden and Russ a little while to get adjusted. I mean they played together before but they didn't have as many as they wasn't handling mm -hmm. the ball as much as they are now. Okay. They both wasn't M V P candidates before and now they are. So I think it'll take them a while to get adjusted. And they lost a lot. Gerald Green broke his foot. I don't think they uh mm -hmm. that's a big piece. He did something to his foot. I don't think they're I don't think this this ain't their year, not for me. Uh I got Utah at the sixth seed. I got Dallas at the seventh seed. Only because they're young and I think they shout out to Eddie Stars. He said they was one piece away. They they really might be one piece away. Luca's the real deal. Yes, Luca Doncic is the real deal, and 100%. KP seven three. He going he just coming back from ACL surgery. He's just getting used to it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can't I can't get rid of Pop. I got the Spurs at the AC. Got the Spurs at the AC. I think mm. they'll find a way again. Uh, you know, uh, Brent Forbes and uh, Derek White. They got the kid back to John Tate Murray this yeah, year. Murray, uh, you know. And, oh, and what's his name? Got them. What's his name? Got them braids. Uh, DeRozan got them West Coast uh, <laughs> Kendrick Lamar braids. So I think they'll they'll be the eight seed just because you know he telling people to be humble. You know what <laughs> I mean? So I think that's that's my. I got the Spurs over the uh, the Suns. I don't see the Spurs. Hey, this prediction we'll we'll see. We will. Well, nobody thought they was gonna make it last year. That's a fact. So we'll see. MVP candidates three. My MVP candidates. No, you went first. I'm going Go first ahead. this time. <laughs> okay. I'm going Anthony Davis. Okay. One. Well, no. He's actually number three. I put him three. Uh, he's going to be up there because I think LeBron realizes he's about to be 35 years old in December. I think he knows. Like, he's still a dog. Don't get it messed up. But I think he knows, okay, this is Anthony Davis' team. I think he'll defer to him. And he's been killing. He had a 40 and 20 game, another 30 and 18 or something like that. So, yeah, I think it's Anthony Davis' team, and I think he'll be an MVP candidate. Luka Doncic is number two for me. He's just coming into his own. Uh, he looks very good. He went head-to-head -head against LeBron, triple-double they lost. But, mm -hmm. you know, he young and, and he hungry. He wants it. You know, last year was the, the rookie year. I'm going to show everybody I belong. And this year is like, oh, I already knew I belong. I just had to show you all last year. Now I'm, I'm, I'm taking shit over. This year, and, and, and I, this might be a little biased. Uh, and well, my MVP candidate, I'm not naming the the regulars. I'm not naming Hart and yeah, 
uh, Giannis and LeBron because you know they're already always going to be. But I'm going Kyrie Irving. Uh, first Ooh. seven games, he averaging thirty two point six rebounds, eight assists. Uh, no Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. He has free reign in Brooklyn, and he's very efficient. And one thing that he appears now as compared to ball, he seems happy. Okay. He seems happy. He seems like he's having fun. He, he he says it after every game when they do it. Like this is my. I'm happy to be home. Yeah. You know, think about it. He never. Nobody who wants to play in Cleveland for the most part, besides LeBron, because he's from there. Uh, he didn't ask to get traded to Boston. He just asked to get traded. Okay. You know what I mean? So he didn't. Mm. And that's a very good point. And that's not, a very good point. And not for nothing, Boston is quote unquote known as a racist town. I mean, you know, that's just what I've heard as far as when it comes to athletes. So now he gets to pick where mm -hmm. he wants to be. He comes to Brooklyn. He could have went anywhere. Could have went to the Knicks. Whoever else was trying to get him, and he, he chose his destination. So now, I mean, 32, 6, and 8, that was a very good stats. Can he keep okay. it up? We'll see. Okay. All right, so my MVPs. So third place, I'm going to go with Luka. Okay. I like Luka. I like what he's doing. I just have to see if he can withhold this. Mm -hmm. Can he keep this up throughout the whole entire season? Or at least 75% of the season. If he keeps up playing how he's playing now for 75% of the season, he'll be right there in the MVP vote at the end of the season. Uh, number two, I got Jimmy Buckets. Mm -hmm. I like I like Jimmy Butler, man. And when he has something to prove, like he's just a different animal. And he went to Miami. Nobody think nobody was thinking anything of Miami these past couple years. You know, D Wade did his little retirement ceremony out there, just trading jerseys and all that. So everybody kind of marked them off like ah, Miami's done. But with Jimmy Butler stepping up, they looking good starting early. I think he can carry this team to a good run in the playoffs, and I think he's gonna show out this year. Okay. Uh, my top MVP. I'm going to go with. Wait. Anthony Davis. I'm about to say, you want me to do a drum roll? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with Anthony Davis. I think um, just from the way of seeing how the game is being played in in, uh, in L.A., they're looking to get him the ball. You know, he already does what he does on the defensive end. He's leading the NBA in blocks already. Mm -hmm. You know, he's always going to be top ten in rebounds. Yeah. All right. And the way that he's going to be able to score this year just because he's getting that many touches is – what did he shoot, 22 free throws last season? No, he shot 27 one day. 27. And I said, all right, this shit different. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, like, with him getting that many touches, getting to the free throw line, getting easier baskets, like his average is going to be amongst the top in scoring in the league. Hmm. On top of the way he plays defense and the way he's rebounding the ball, I think he – it's it's kind of – it's he's on the path. Okay. Rookie of the year candidate. So, I'm going to go first again. Mm -hmm. um, my three, I'm going from uh, who I think is the least likely uh, to the best option for me. Not least okay. likely, but the least likely out of my three. Okay. I got P.J. Washington in Charlotte. Okay. Uh, I think he's going to have all the opportunity to score the ball. It's just Terry Rozier is there, but I don't mm -hmm. I don't like Nick Batum. Miles Bridges is okay, but he ain't mm -hmm. great. Uh, I think he's going to get every opportunity to score. And he, he hit seven threes or eight threes in his debut or something like that, averaging about 15 and seven. I think, yeah, I think he's going to be up there. R.J. Barrett, number two. Obviously, this is without Zion. Got him missing all those games, so okay. we'll see. Uh, got R.J. Barrett. I don't really like the Knicks roster. I think they got a bunch of power forwards. I think they got him playing the wrong position. Uh, but he's producing. He's even shooting a three way better now than he did in college. Only thing that he's slacking on right now is free throws, and I think the more he'll get experience at, at the position he's playing, I think they got him playing the three. Okay. Or maybe the two. I think the more he gets experience there, the better he'll get. Leading candidate for me, and this is going to be a little bit of a surprise to some because he was undrafted within a G League last year. Uh, a lot of people may not know who this is. This is Kendrick Nunn. Mm, he played for the Miami, Miami. Heat. Yeah. Yes. Went to Illinois, then he transferred to Oakland. Uh, I think he's, he, he's number one for me just because of the reason you put Jimmy Butler up, the, up there as an MVP candidate. Yeah. And – Think about it. They drafted Tyler Hero mm -hmm. in the draft, and he he's like 13, 14, something like that. He doesn't even start. 
Kendrick Nunn starts over him. He's shooting the ball about 16, 17 times a game. Very crafty. And I think because he went undrafted, I think because he was in the G League, he wants to show everybody that I can play. Uh, that makes sense. I can play, and I think yeah. I'm going to prove to all you scouts and all you evaluators that you were wrong. And you were wrong about me, and he's a dog. He can shoot, just flow the game, left hand, right hand, he get to the rim. I like Kendrick Nunn. He got the best mentor in the league for that type of attitude, Jimmy uh-huh. Butler, Butler right yeah. there. So that makes sense. All right, so for me, for my rookie of the year candidates, uh, number three, you know me. I gotta, I gotta go on my squad. Oh, uh, Kobe White. <laughs> so I got, I gotta put Kobe White in there. Not only just because he's on my squad, but he has, he's been showing. He's been showing and proving. The only thing is that, you know, he had about three or four good games. He had two where he kind of dipped off. So that made me a little cautious. That's why I'm putting him at number three. But if he would have stayed consistent, I probably would have had him at the top of the list. Okay. Number two. Number two, I'm gonna go with. R.J. Barrett. Okay. I like what he's doing over there. I really do. Even though he's from Duke, and that's a whole <laughs> other story. But I got, I got, I got to be a realist. Like he's doing what he's been projected to do, and you know he's bringing life back to the Garden. Okay. You know he's filling the seats, getting the fans involved, and you know he's giving people something to cheer for in New York again. Okay. Or at least for the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the Knicks. And at the top of the list. And again, this is uh, minus Zion. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with John Morant. Okay, I, I like what he's doing. He he has the ability to to be explosive scoring wise, and playing where he's at in Memphis is like it's pretty much it's his opportunity to okay. take control and make a name for himself this year. You know, obviously, if Zion plays 75 percent of the season, they're going to give it to him regardless of what happens. But I think these three guys can uh, really make some noise. Yeah, no. I like uh, Kobe White's played well. He had a couple 17-point games off the mm-hmm. bench. I just don't think he'll be in a conversation because he plays with two other guards, and I don't think the production is going to be there consistently mm-hmm. with Zach Levine there. And, uh, you don't like the good Sadoransky and, and Chris Dunn. So I think that'll be tough for him to, to, to score consistently. Mm-hmm. I think he'll have his nights. Uh I like John Morant too. I just wanted to go with Kendrick Nunn because I had John Morant, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I wanted to give a little love to somebody who wasn't really, who's not noticed. That's but, cool. Kobe White got twenty-two points in eighteen minutes tonight. Just <laughs> whatever. Right. Uh, speaking of the rookies, right? They, you know, mm-hmm. they fresh from college. College yep. basketball season started today. Yeah. You know what I mean, so uh, Duke played Kansas. I think Duke might have won by two. I'm not a hundred percent sure. The last time I was checked, they was winning. And uh, Kentucky's playing Michigan State right now. Yeah, Those Kentucky's are good up right now. Okay, what's that score in that game? That's eleven four. Just got started. And who won that Duke game? The Duke game. Put it up for you. Where's the game? While he's looking, I just think college basketball is going to be very good this year. A uh, lot of disparity. I think when uh, I said disparity. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be – I don't think it's going to be four top teams like it usually is. You know what I'm saying? Why not? I just think it's spread out. I think last year proved that, you know, Duke with Zion and Cam Reddish and R.J. Barrett was favored to go to the championship. You guys with Kobe White and Luke May. I hate yeah. Luke May. Uh, <laughs> Was was favored to go. And, and then you end up with Auburn. You, and Virginia, people uh, like them. Well, Duke, Duke won by two. Yes, he Duke won by two. Virginia, people liked them, but how realistic was it for them to go to the championship after getting bounced in the first round mm. the uh, the year before? And I think if Auburn doesn't lose Okiki in, in that game, they, they mess around and beat them. Mm. Texas Tech, who who knew old boy was going to go off like that? Uh, oh, God. So I just think, and I think that's going to be more, I think that's going to happen more consistently often than not. You know what I mean? So, uh Let's go like this. Who who who's your team to beat right now? My team to beat? Yeah, I already know what you're gonna say, but go ahead. I am I'm gonna go off the grid. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with my with my I'm not gonna be biased, let me mm-hmm. say. And say North Carolina because obviously, you know, we we are we do what we do. But what I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with Memphis. They have a huge recruiting class. Mm-hmm. Huge recruiting class, a bunch of players that do a lot of different things. They have size. And at the college level, that kind of makes a huge difference as opposed to the NBA. James Wiseman, 
Precious, mm -hmm. Lester Cronus. Yeah. Uh, I can't even pronounce his last name, but <laughs> he's a shooter. Think about Lester and uh, Precious play. They both played the Benex together. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, they that they, Hardaway Son is there. Yep. They definitely got a great recruiting class. Only reason I went against them was, I think the last great recruiting class to win the championship might have been AD and them at Kentucky. Uh, I just yeah. think at this at this uh, level, coaching takes over more than talent does. NBA, there's good coaches like Pop and Brad Stevens, but usually more often than not, talent usually wins out. Makes sense. And this one, I think coaching stands out a little bit more. Not to talk about Coach K or, or Coach Cal or anything like that, but I like like old boy from Texas Tech. He got I think this is like his second year there. He he went to the final four. He went to the championship game. Yeah. You know what I mean? He he gets the most out of his team. Uh Bennett at Virginia, very good coach. Mm -hmm. Tom Izzo. Uh, so I just think it's a lot of great coaches that's getting the most out of their team. And speaking of Tom Izzo, I got Michigan State as my team to beat this year. Cassius Winston is back, senior point guard. Uh, they got Joshua Langford. Rock, watch out for Rocket Watts. Rocket Watts is another guard that they got. Um, I just think they, and, uh, they're this, in, huh? This is why I'm not big on Michigan State this year. Mm -hmm. Normally, Michigan State flies under the radar, and somehow, some way, they end up in the Final Four. This is like one of those rare seasons where everyone's expecting them to do good. So because the expectation is so high, I don't know if they can live up to expectations. Well, uh, the reason I do uh, is, is Cassius Winston. Very steady point guard. Mm -hmm. He not the flashy John Moran with dunk on your head type, mm -hmm. but very solid ex extended coach on the floor. They went to the uh, Final Four last year. He's been there before. He knows how it feels to lose in the big game, but he also knows how to win big games. And I just think that trio, him, Rocket Watts, and Langford, it's going to be a lot for people to hold, especially in the Big Ten. I don't see a lot of crazy competition in the Big Ten as compared to the ACC yeah. or, or the uh, the SEC. Like, where who's their main competition? The Ohio State, Nebraska. A shout out to uh, – <laughs> uh, oh my God! They show a Burke. Shout out to my boy. They show a Burke yeah. at Nebraska. He had a good game the other day too. Yeah, so yeah, like fifteen or sixteen, a little yeah. uh, ex exhibition game. Yep. Uh, but uh, I don't see the team that's going to give them competition every single night. Like, well, not mm -hmm. every single night, but, but like night night ACC. Out. You, they weren't about Auburn. Or not Auburn. They weren't about uh, Clemson. Duke were about North Carolina. They were about Clemson. Shout out to uh, old boy from St. Pat's. Uh, 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 Alamir. Uh, Alamir. He's had a, he having a good game today, too. I was mm -hmm. checking the stats. So, I just think, not that they're going to fly in the red. I think they might have it a little bit easier than, you know, the Dukes in North Carolina. I get what you're saying. Uh, top freshman. Top freshman. You know where I'm going, baby. Go ahead. Go ahead. Name that boy. Light skin kid. You know who it is. Cole Anthony, man. Yeah. And Cole he, Anthony. He do it all, man. And the thing I like about Cole is that although he can score, although he can score, he gets other people involved. So even when he's attacking the basket, his eyes is always up looking to get other people the ball. If he doesn't have a shot, he drops it off. He finds the shooters. Mm -hmm. Like, he does it all for me. Okay. Uh, me, I was going to say James Wiseman, but I forgot about my boy. This kid, I think he's going to go be a top five draft pick next year, maybe top three. I seen him play live when we went to Vegas, uh, played on the Under Armour circuit, but they had like a mixture. His name's Anthony Edwards. He mm -hmm. stayed at home, went to Georgia, but he could have went to Kentucky. He was getting recruited by everybody. Okay. This kid can pretty much do it all. I seen him dog pretty much everybody. He can take it to the rim. Got a nice build. He's explosive. He put that shit on your head. Mm -hmm. He can shoot. He has court vision. He's very, very, very good. Remember, okay. today is November 5th. I'm telling you, <laughs> Anthony Edwards. Watch out for him from Georgia. Mm. Okay. Uh, as far as player of the year, now I'm going to be biased. And it's not really biased. I'm going with my boy, Miles Powell. Uh, one big, he should have won Big East Player of the Year last year. Now they got him as the Big East Player of the Year in the uh, preseason. They think he's going to win it. They got my boy. We, we finally ranked in the preseason. We ranked top 13. Uh, can shoot it. He's 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 putting it on the floor now, becoming more mm -hmm. of a playmaker. And you'll be hard pressed to find another shooter in the country that can make as many tough shots as he can. That's cool. I'm going with somebody in the same conference though. Let me talk about Marcus Howard. My boy. Yeah. You, but see, Marcus, Marcus Howard can put Howard. it out. And I'm gonna just go against you right here. What? You saw what happened when Seton Hall played Villanova. What My I boy damn had like a 40 point game. That's cool. Your man had 20 in the first half, and we locked that shit up. Mm -hmm. And he lost them two boys, them two white twins. Yeah, they transferred. That's cool. So we're gonna see this year. Hey, we'll see. We're gonna see. They in the same conference. 
Oh, you know what time it is, You man. know what time it is. Well, respect Miles Power, dog. Hey, my peoples, we're going to get some tickets to that game. <laughs> oh, last one, uh, Sleeper. I got Quad A Green transferred from Kentucky. He, he transferred to Washington. I think it's a more stable situation from him. I don't think he was ready for that limelight to be at Kentucky, that one and done. Washington may be a little bit better for him. He's seasoned now. Um, and he's comfortable. I think it's AAU coaches there or something like that. So I think Quad A Green will do good out there. That's my Sleeper. I mean, anybody that knows me is going to be surprised when I pick this sleeper because I, I kind of – I really, 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 really hate Duke. But I like Trey Jones, man. As a point guard, as a leader, he's just tough, man. He, you can tell he's been through some battles basketball-wise. He's been through a lot. He's seen a lot. And no matter what, he still gets his troops ready to go, man. I like Trey Jones. If Duke is going to be as good as they're projected to be, it's going to be because of him. Okay, okay. Well, I want to say shout out to the listeners. Thank you for uh, listening to the very, very first episode. Shout out to Bob, our engineer. He going to have our sound sounding real, real good. Mm-hmm. Hey, ladies, if you if you like my voice on this, you know what I mean? Let's, hey. you shout out to Bob. Holla at him. And, uh, <laughs> thanks to 10,000 Hours of Network. That's where we're going to be located on. It's the clipboard. To next time, we'll have some interviews for you with NBA players, college players, some coaches. Uh, this is where you're going to get your – up close and personal information when it comes to basketball. You're Coach Chuck. T-Rob, we out.